Good morning, Mr. Stevens and Mr. Longridge. How are we? Very well, thank you, sir. Very well, thank you. Wonderful. Uh, so today's video, we're going to embark upon 1.4, which concerns product analysis and product disassembly. Um, I think it's probably important that we start with a bit of a recap. Um, so, Mr. Longridge, if you'd like to just go through where our students should be right now, I think that'd be really helpful. No problem. OK. Uh, so we started off the uh, the first video where we looked at the actual context that had been set by OCR. So as you'll remember, OCR published these uh, three contexts. We got students to analyze them. Uh, we've looked at, uh, produced mind maps for them. So we've thought about all the different aspects of them and presented that in that first sheet. By the end of that first sheet, you should have had a good idea about which one you were uh, swaying towards. So which one that you thought you may partake within this piece of coursework. Uh, we then moved on to our second video where we looked at some initial research by exploring the context even further. So we'd looked up at least 10 different websites and we'd have tried to find information about the key information about the, the topic or area that we were looking at. So for example, if we were doing the, the multi-purpose spaces, you may have found out about small space living. You may have found out about the tiny house movement. And with that, you're looking for key pieces of data you're using that data to, to bring together some kind of thinking uh, with analysis to say whether it's good or bad for your project that ultimately will feed into your next piece of work, which is where we generated a design brief. Uh, that was what we covered in the third video. With the design brief, we used the findings from our investigation into different pieces of research to generate a number of possible design briefs. Uh, they then presented their favorite design brief before exploring potential primary users. So, so far you should have now investigated the context, done some initial research, and then presented a design brief. In the, the next video, we then looked at the stakeholder needs and requirements. And this was a quite a substantial piece of work because you have to go out and do some kind of research into the primary user requirements. You may do interviews, you may do observations, uh, and that piece of work all comes together, you bring all those findings together to list a detailed list of stakeholder needs. So you can see here that we've got 19 stakeholder needs down one side of the page. And from them, you extrapolate uh, at least six primary user needs that you're going to use throughout your project as you're designing and developing to ensure that the product that you make meets the requirements of your target users. So, so far, we should have a really good, clear indication of the, the direction of the project. We should know what we're doing. We should know where we're going and we should know who the stakeholders are and what their needs are. Fantastic. Uh, so I think before we start with 1.4, then probably a good idea to look at the criteria uh, before we move on. So if you can give us that, Mr. Stevens, and, and perhaps you'd like to go through that as well. Yeah, so no we've problem. got. Sorry, yeah, we've, uh, as always, we want you to find your own route through this. Um, if you're aware of the criteria, if you've got a few pieces of example I work to look at, we want you to find your own way of displaying this information. But as a guide, we, we can tell you certain things. So um, we want you to present this as, as two different pages. One, we're looking at product analysis. Uh, so you're going to look at a, a range of different products that are linked to the project that you've chosen. You can see this detailed in, in the higher mark band, band section on the, the right hand side down here. Um, and we also want you to do some some further primary research where you're going to disassemble a product which is in some way linked to the project that you've chosen. OK, so if we look at the, the criteria and, and relate that to what I've just said, we look at the higher mark band, we're looking at mark band four. So comprehensive and relevant information and sources of inspiration are identified to influence on design iterations and thinking when required. So that means you have to look at products that already, already exist but then show how you are going to use those products and how you're going to be inspired by those products when you come to designing and developing your own product. Down the higher mark band section, um, you need to look into lots and lots of detail when you're analyzing these products. So uh, it gives a few examples of materials and sizes and construction. It says they're investigating as required during the project. So although we are going to spend a bit of time looking at in depth right now, there's nothing stopping you. And it should be encouraged, in fact, that you do this throughout the project. You might find that uh, you, you, you develop your product in a few months time and you think, oh, I'm not quite sure how to do this bit. So I'm going to find another product that's linked to it and I'm going to analyze this product again. And that'll feed into your project. Mm -hmm. um, direct contact with existing products, a hands-on approach. This must be 
primary. Okay, you have to have the product and be able to take photographs of you dismantling uh, and analyzing these products. Pictures from the internet are half as good. Okay, so primary research is absolutely essential. Okay. What this really encompasses is, is the work of others. Um, I think, you know, when you when you sort of get into A-level, we also look at how other designers and other manufacturers work. But in this particular case, we're looking at existing products that are already on the market. And what we're trying to find out is how those were made, what processes we use, what materials we use. And, and essentially what we really need is, is justification because we want to use that information and, and invest it into our own work, essentially. In this first example, you can see that the candidate has already selected five different products. What's really important about analysis, as the word suggests, is that we're looking at a sort of a two-sided balanced argument about each product. And what we're really trying to look at is the suitability against the, the project context and actually probably our design brief as well. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. In this particular case, the candidates looked at the strengths, the weaknesses, and actually looked at material construction and, and, and they've gone as far as to look at cost and sizes as well. Another thing that you might do, um, and, and I would urge you to do this as well, would actually to be using your primary user needs at this particular case. So if you get your puns that were established in 1.3, what you can do is you can start to classify the, these products that you found and see how suitable they are against your primary user needs. Because if you find a product that, that hits some of those puns, but is perhaps fails to hit one, it might give you an opportunity as to where to focus some of your efforts when it comes into initial ideas. Um, I think we've got another example of this as well, if, if, if you want to have a look. Um, and then moving forward in this particular example, we've then got the product disassembly. Um, I, I want to point something out actually at this point that the word disassembly obviously infers that you have to dismantle something. It's not actually the case. You, what you do need to do is just have hands-on experience with the product and just have a close-up view of the different components, the different materials that are used, the processes, if you can guess that, mechanisms and so forth. You know, we do have students in the past that have sort of looked at desks and they've looked at uh, furniture, and that might kind of nestle in with multi-purpose spaces. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go and dismantle desks and, and, and things at home, but you just need to be mindful of a, a, a holistic view of all the components and processes that are used to make that that product is, is would be my tip essentially. Absolutely, yeah. So in terms of a, a second example, again we've got uh, what looks to be seven examples here, um, and this candidate again looking at strengths and weaknesses, the materials that we're using, the construction, and th and this is incredibly useful. It's really useful because it allows you to really think about you know a range of products. Um, that eventually will inspire you and, and inform your initial ideas process. You know, you might actually borrow aspects of a whole range of these products and, and, and use them in the synthesis of your own. Um, but as Mr. Stevens has already mentioned in the video, you know, an image can be quite difficult to, to really get a hold on all of the processes and materials, uh, for example. Now, I really like this page because it clearly shows hands-on um, experience with a product by the candidate. You know, we've got close-up images of all sorts of uh, aspects of the work, and it might be the materials that are used, um, how materials are put together. In this particular case, it looks like they're single-stitched. We've got eyelets that, that add stability around the canvas material, and then we've got this threaded um, rope or string material that's going to allow that bag to close up to, for, for security so that your items don't fall out. And that's incredibly useful to have that experience with the product. And what you're trying to find are opportunities that you can improve and the successes that you want to ensure that you absolutely have in your own product if you have those sort of similar mechanisms, for example. Uh, has anyone got anything else to add to that? I think the, the big point for me would be the primary versus secondary research in this entire section. Uh, and that my, my advice to, to everybody would be the more primary research you can include, the better. And that's for both the comparison table and for the individual product disassembly. Uh, so in my mind, if they were actually real products, so imagine this student went into the garden or went into the shed and found a trowel and photographed themselves holding the trowel, that 
adds far, far more uh, more credibility to what you're talking about because it shows an interaction with the product. So the only extra point I'd make, and I think it's quite crucial, is that the more primary research you can add to this whole section, the, the more credible your research becomes. Uh, the I'm just looking as well. This is a good example because it gives specific materials. So when it says uh, the second example for the trowel, stainless steel has been used. Right, they're not just saying it's metal or they're not just saying it's made out of wood. They're trying to be as specific as they can to, to explain uh, the details of the product. You could also, especially on the product disassembly, you may actually find out information about that material. So in that bag example uh, we have a 1.5, uh, looks like it would be some kind of polyester or nylon. We might explain that. We might say, uh, we might bring in a little clip to say, what it is and why it's been used in this instance. Uh, it looks like something that uh, a gardening said. It has to be tough and durable. By using a synthetic material within the, the product, you're able to uh, to limit moisture damage. I think what's good on this on this page as well is, is, is the summary. It's only fairly brief, the box in the bottom right hand corner. This yeah. person's done all this research, done some secondary, some primary research, and it is very, very valuable, but it's not just left as a standalone item. They've, they've summarized it and said, look, I found this out and this out and this out and this is how I'm going to use it. And it's mm -hmm. helping this student to, to uh, draw influence from what they've done and make their products uh, that they're about to design and develop even better. Yes. It's yeah. a really good point that you make. Yeah, I mean, I think it's vitally important that you you share always how the processes and the journey that you've been through informs your decision making. And it's part of 5.2. So actually, all of the decision making that you make you know, the reasons for acceptance and rejection of processes, materials, whatever that may be, you are going to be eventually marked on that. So it's really, really important that you have a, a critical and evaluative approach to everything that you do in your work. Yeah. One other thing that, that might help you as well is that if you are trying to identify materials and processes, please, please do use your Hodder educational textbooks. There's a wealth of information there that's nice, it's succinct, it's really easy to digest. And it's okay to take screenshots or photographs of content in that book, provided that you reference it in your work. You must, yeah. must, must say where you've got these pieces of information just to add authenticity to your work. Yeah, and that's just the same if you use web links. You've got to have those links. You've got to make it clear where you're finding out information. So by the end of this section, you should have a really clear understanding of similar products the manufacturing methods used, the materials used, that accumulate in informing your next step in this project. So how are you gonna use this information? What potential materials are you gonna use in your product? What potential manufacturing methods would you use in your product? And hopefully that will now help, help you as you start to, to think about your initial ideas in, in developing this product of your own. Uh, I do just think it's important to note that when it comes to the final manufacture, you need to think about what room you'll be in. So if you're going to be in a graphics room with me or Mr. Mr. Stoko, that will inform or that should have some kind of indication uh, on what kind of materials and products you should be looking at analyzing here. So to me, have a think about the types of products. How are they relevant to what your context is? And is it something that you could potentially gain? Can you gain information from it to help inform your own design? Wonderful. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Longridge and Mr. Stevens, for your time today. What the three of us will also do is we will give you some additional guidance when um, analysing your product, specifically when it's product disassembly. We we do have two anagrams that you can use. There's Access FM, which is used often, and each of those letters um, refers to a different area that you can do your analysis through. And my groups, generally speaking, we talk about something called Supreme Fame, uh, which is pretty much the same, but it, it does add some additional categories that will make it easy for you. So if you can look at those headings um, for, for in both cases, they will, they will act as prompts, really, that you can use to explore and analyze and evaluate the products that you, uh, that you, that you research, essentially. Uh, and I think that is everything from us. Uh, yeah. Anything to add? Not Wonderful. Amazing. Okay. Well, good, good luck, luck year eleven. Good luck year eleven, and uh, we look forward to seeing your work. Thank See you very much. much. Thank you.